Hello, my wonderful audience. Hope you're great, safe, and ready. Uh, today, I intend to talk about something new in the、uh, field of telecom hacking.、Um, <clears throat> it's really, really hard for security experts,、um, telecom engineers, and mobile operators to deal with signaling and telecom attacks.、Um, so, why it's hard? Um, the answer is because telco networks are complex and includes many segments like radio signaling, IP backbones, IT packet data, etc. So in this talk, I don't want to talk about basic and traditional tags.、Uh, I just want to illustrate how we can break into a hardened telco infrastructure. While they are using security devices. First of all, I want to introduce myself. I am Ali, a cybersecurity researcher focusing on all aspects of offensive, more than eight years. Um, other books, articles as well. Also, I'm regular speaker and trainer at in international conferences. Holding massive computer science and many international certificates, and I'm working as a bug hunter. So,、uh, according to the news, as you、uh, can see in this slide, many fraud and other types of cyber incidents have occurred in、um, past several years while they are. Uh, the app using telecom and mobile infrastructure.、Uh, in top left corner,、uh, you can see that、uh, malfactors exploit SS7 network to inject a malware、uh, to attack on financial companies and banks. And in other news, on the left side, you can see that、uh, hackers targeted UK Metro Bank through SS7. And on the right side, there is a news regarding to vulnerabilities in mobile networks in United States.、Um, in this slide, I divided all possible attacks and vulnerabilities in telecommunication. First is、um, subscriber profile data leakage. The second one is network and node data leakage. Third one is tracking mobile subscribers and breaking their privacy. Next one is sniffing, spoofing, fraud,、uh, like、um, transferring money using、uh, USSD operations or making free call or、um, cheap calls as well. Okay,、uh, for those who has no enough background of mobile network, here's the architecture of a mobile operator. Each MNO or mobile network operator has three main segments, include radio access network RAN, which responsible for all radio and basement communications like your connectivity from your handset or mobile phone to the tower. Circuit switch network, CS network, handles your voice and SMS, and packet network is responsible to bring your internet connections and data.、Uh, security in radio access networks. Okay. Uh, mostly, there are three types、uh, sec of security mechanisms in radio access network. First is phone registration or any kind of policies、uh, for your hardware and IMEI.、Uh, second is enabling ciphering algorithms to fight against interception and man in the middle. Third item is using only LTE and LTE advanced infrastructure. Instead of traditional mobile core networks in、uh, 2G and 3G. So now we want to review the high-level architecture of RAN or radio ne access network. 
in uh, radio access networks uh, we have cell tower bts in 2g node b in 3g and e node b or evolved node b in 4g lte you can see that e node b passing your traffic to ps and cs network packet switch and circuit switch networks based on the traffic type if you want internet your traffic will go through PS network and if you want to make a call or send a SMS the traffic will go through CS network and uh, why using IMEI policy to fight against phone smuggling lawful and security monitoring tracking stolen devices and criminals Um, okay, now with the help of Motorola C uh, 150 and uh, 118 and Osmocom BB software, we can set an invalid or fake or even duplicate IMEI and set up a call to test network reactions. You can see that I set my I set up my IMEI uh, to uh, all zero so that's an invalid IMEI and now so according to um, the screenshot here uh, network sent identity request to my phone and the type of identity was IMEI you can see here and and I replied to it using an invalid IMEI set to all zero. So the network is wonderful. So the network accepted my invalid IMEI because ciphering procedures completed. And this is the IMEI policy bypass here because net mobile uh, radio network and uh, the whole operator network accepted uh my phone with uh, me as a subscriber as a mobile subscriber with an invalid imei okay so uh there are some types of ciphering keys like kc srs and rand or random number in radio access networks which harden uh, the radio network to avoid active sniffing and they always store in HLR or HSS in core network. So HSS or HLR as a subscriber database has a component called AUC or Authentication Center which um, are responsible for ciphering and authentication procedures. Uh, to bypass and get these information, we are going to um, targeting AUC or Authentication uh, Center in HLR HSS by abusing SS7 and signaling access as a roaming partner. And uh, as you can see, I sent a malicious SS7 map or mobile application part SAI or send authentication info to targeted core network from SS7 network to retrieve ciphering info and the network respond me via RAND, stress and KC values in clear text. That's amazing. <laughs> so Another security mechanism is using uh, LTE and LTE Advanced uh, to bring uh, highest quality and performance, uh, having more security and privacy in core and radio segments, um, and other factors like voice over LTE or multi or uh, flexibility, etc. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, let's review bypassing method here. Totally, uh, there is a general way here. Downgrading subscribers to traditional technologies like 3G and 2G, which are, which are vulnerable 
um, to many attacks like um, man in the middle. To perform downgrading, we need to use a signal jammer. Security in circuit switch network or CS core network. <clears throat> Using SMS home routing is the first uh, item, and uh, the second one is signaling fireballs. So, <clears throat> um, home routing acts as a proxy, and the definition of a home router is to hiding. Uh, subscriber MC number which is very valuable information um, to perform hacking scenarios from um, hack hack uh, from a hacker or malfactor perspective as you can see uh, a hacker requested to receive MC from HLR or HSS and the HLR HSS respond with a real value however Home router change uh, the value with a fake one. Um, so how we can detect if home routing is enabled or not? Uh, just need to send two or more malicious SS7 message like uh, send routing info for SM or SI for SM. It's easy. If we received different responses. It means that SMS home routing is in place in our targeting uh, in our targeted operator. Uh, home routing bypass. Uh, in telecom networks, we have uh, three types of GTs or global title, which act as IP address, MS, ISDN, or your phone number. Consist of MCC or mobile country code NDC and SN. MC number consists of MCC, MNC, mobile network code and MSIN. And MGT consists of MCC, NDC and MSIN. So, uh, as you can see, hacker can abuse MGT number and a valid random MC number to request. Uh, other information regarding to targeted mobile number and its real MZ. Uh, signaling firewall. Okay. Uh, mobile operators use uh, signaling firewalls uh, to protect their signaling infrastructure, signal packet inspection, filtering. Uh, white and blacklisting. Signaling firewall bypass. To bypass these kind of firewalls, we need uh, just to playing with TCAP. So, uh, what is TCAP? TCAP is a SS7 sub protocol and it's like TCP. You can see um uh, Wireshark uh a screenshot from my Wireshark here that this is um transaction capabilities application part or TCAP TCAP begin message and TCAP end message so um okay to uh to perform bypassing, we need to remove application context name from TCAP or sending double operation message. Let's get into it. Uh, removing app context name from TCAP message. Uh, okay, to start uh, the procedure, we need to remove dialog request section from our malicious SS7 message. Then um, there will not app context name to point to malicious SS7 map message. You can see here. So, sending double operation message. Uh, most of signaling firewall block or accept a message based on message type. 
So each signaling message has its own opcode or operation code, and it's a vital number. In this uh, screenshot, you can see SRI4SM, uh, and uh, it's relate opcode here. So, um, cord, uh, according to the picture, hacker is trying to put a legitimate SS7 map message to opcode in the first step, and then put a malicious SS7 message. So, signaling firewall uh, will check just the first operation code. <laughs> which is pointing to a legitimate operation and you can see here that the um, CS code nodes and functions uh, uh, respond with the real number and signaling firewall uh, will check uh, check the first operation so and signaling firewall thinks that it seems a legitimate SS7 message so the hacker bypass signal firewall and will retrieve the real number uh, or any information that uh, the hacker wants to receive from the core network like here so here that's that's it that the subscriber MC or a network information uh, received by hacker here Okay, so uh, solutions. Uh, first, an important thing is uh, hardening the devices, protocols, and communications based on industrial standards like 3GPP, Etsy, uh, etc. Using firewall, or if you are using signaling firewall already, you can um, fine tune and optimize it. A TSOC or Telecom uh, Security Operation Center uh, is highly recommended. Uh, periodic assessment and audits are necessary, and training and security awareness are very useful. Uh, thank you, folks, for your attention. Um, you can stay in touch with me, uh, sharing knowledge and experience together, and finding more friends. Stay safe and healthy.